Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Storyteller Spotlight. Today we're going to be featuring Neil Adams. All right, first things first, a little housekeeping. Check out my Patreon. I have over 55 unlisted videos. I'll send you links to about 25 immediately when um, you sign up. Well, immediately when I get the notification. Um, and and uh, then if you look on the main page, you'll, you can scroll down and find tons of videos. I just did a 30-minute review of someone's sequentials for them, and he was nice enough to share them. It was a $50 tier he took. Um, I do an over-hour over, over hour, uh, lesson where I go over your work. I do draw-overs. Um, I give you all the files of the things that I've worked on for you. Um, you get the video. Um, it's also unlisted on YouTube, so you have access to it anytime you want. Um, and uh, it's been going really good. Um, Patreon is blowing up. I've done a bunch of super fun Sundays for them that haven't been on YouTube. Storyteller things. I, I, I pretty much post there at least once or twice a day. So it's been fantastic. So, uh, And the tiers are going to be changing. In about two months, I'm actually going to change the price points on things. So right now would be a good time to get in because you get access to just about everything for, for a dollar, which is a really good deal. Trust me. At Patreons, if you're here, you let them know. <laughs> All right, so uh, I was asleep, and uh, this book came to me, and I was like, I need to do a storyteller spotlight on Neil Adams. Um, I'm not super familiar with Neil Adams' work, believe it or not. Um, I, I know it. I know the importance of it and the value of it and the influence that it's carried over into... It, it, he basically changed comics. He's one of those guys that his work had an impact on comics that it was like... You have before Neil Adams and you have after Neil Adams. And it's still something that's felt to this day. So he's incredibly important. Um, the, the problem that I've had collecting Neil's work and, and really getting into it is most of the stuff that I've had access to are reprints. And uh, they tend to recolor his stuff. And I can't stand the colors. Um, <laughs> it sounds funny. But, but if you can get newsprint copies of his books, they look a million times better. So... As far as I know, Neil comes from a, a pretty serious illustration and commercial background. And uh, when he came into comics, I mean, the guy was just a drawing machine. He's a fantastic draftsman. Um, and uh, his stuff is really dynamic. It's it's just, it's pedal to the metal in a way that comics hadn't seen up to that point. And, and again, I'm I'm only reiterating this through... What I've learned, um, I mean, this all happened <laughs> 25 years before I was, like, even collecting comics. But, uh, you know, the thing is, is it's like if you're a big fan of music, you, you know the history of it. And so I've learned the history of it. But, yeah, the, the, the challenging thing for me has just been getting um, the comics in my hands. Like, he did a big run on Dead Man, but, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like I need to see the comic books. I can't look at these fruity like just super bright recolored books and they just they look weird to me so that's my critique of them is is like an artist edition of his his stuff would be great um but i mean like you can see that's like mark silvestri right there <laughs> it's it's he's influenced jim lee i mean all all these guys really oh uh you know a debt of gratitude. I'm not saying that they don't they don't give him props, but uh, yeah, you really can't um, un underestimate the, the the importance of Neil Adams. So that's why I thought this would, this would be a really good book for me to look at because what I'm trying to do now is add a, a little more sort of excitement and kind of like a spontaneity to my stuff. So <laughs> the cape is crazy. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so we'll just we'll kind of get our feet wet and look at a few pages first here really quick. You see what I'm talking about with the colors, though? Ugh. Yeah, I'm just not feeling it. I think Neil and his son actually go back and recolor a lot of this stuff, but it's just not to my taste. No no offense to them, but but uh, it, 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 there's something about the way that it prints on newsprint originally, too, that just looks cool. And, and look, I'm sure there's a million mistakes and things that drove him nuts with his work colored back then so i get why he would want to go revisit it but sometimes just let sleeping dogs lie man that face is great you can see ivan rice i mean you know and they you know the thing is is they may even be getting it from a secondary a secondary source you know what i mean where it's like it's already traveled down the line and uh 
nice, nice layouts here. So let's look at the layout since we're talking about storytelling. Let me grab a pointer. All right, so it's got Bruce in here. It's, this is a little bit of a cramped panel, and Alfred is sitting very, very high in it. Honestly, like, like it, it, it's a little weird. Um, but, but anyway, the the reality is, is what what he's got is he's got these sweeping shapes that pull you in here, and then he sends you back around this way, and then over here. So. Really nice shot. Someone had asked me about filling in blacks. Like, how do you spot blacks on a page? And, I, I mean, especially for anyone on Patreon, go and watch, like, the last videos that I've done for the last, like, three three or four weeks. So I talk about it constantly. It's, it's knowing the fundamentals. If you can't light a cube or a sphere, um, then you're not going to understand how to light a page. And, and honestly, uh, doing the composition on a page is, is not that hard. It really isn't. It's just you need to get over the hurdle of um, being able to design shapes. So if you don't understand basic shapes, how are you going to deal with all this? You're, the reality is, is you're not. So listen to what I say. Those first four pages in every art book are the most important. It's too, it's too simple. People don't want to believe it. But every almost every drawing that you do is just based on that. Well, they are. They all are. But this is a great, this is a great page. So we go like this, come around here. He sends you over here. He's got these great shapes that are telling you, hey, look this way. He points you with this black over here. Batman's cape that sweeps around. Nice point of interest here. But then he's telling you, hey, go this way, buddy. Go this way. We're going this way. And that's what you do. This is really, really nice. And it's, it's, it's not overdrawn, which I like a lot. It's to the point with with no unnecessary detail, but detailed, you know. Look, the reality is 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 this is the other thing too that I would keep in mind, and I'm and I'm only preaching to people that really want to be storytellers on this. Is you need to come up with a style where you can tell stories, and if your pages are taking you four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days to do, uh, you're not going to tell a lot of stories. <laughs> it, it over a long period of time, you could though. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing four really, really good books in a year. Um, you know, that would be 80 pages. So that would be four, like f a page every four days. Um, so, you know, I mean, it, it can be done, but, um, yeah, you want to come up with something that, that, that that's, remember there's most of the time when people read a comic book, they're not going to spend that much time on a page and, and, uh, I'm all for quality and detail and all that, but, but, uh, yeah, don't go nuts on things that don't matter. Man, that's nice. Oh, man, I've seen that. Someone else has done that shot. It might be Jim. The cape was in a different spot, but, man, that is really, really similar. It's, it's the gesture. <coughs> Looks familiar. This is really cool. All right, so let's look at the storytelling on this page. So we got a little inset panel. It's nice. It's interesting that he didn't draw the chair. It's just like him <laughs> sort of sitting in space. But uh, anyway, I think it works as a design element because if there was a chair here, it would stop it a little bit more. So it actually works. I wouldn't question the master Neil Adams. This is a beautiful, beautiful shot. Very just like... Um, how Foster or, or kind of, I don't know, just has got like a little bit of that feel with the, it's like, where are they? They're in Calcutta, right? So let's see. So anyway, he's, but he, he leads you this way. And the word board balloons are actually very, very well done. That's an important part too is, uh, you know, working with, with uh, talented people around you. But again, what I always tell you about weapons, they can move you through a page. And he does it here flawlessly. Look, click. You see that? And then all this points here. This is, I'm utilizing so much of this stuff. Um, and anyone on Patreon can vouch for it because they've seen uh, some stuff. <laughs> I won't say more. <laughs> you can go over to Patreon and check it out. But but uh, yeah, I mean, I utilize all this stuff. I, I didn't learn it from Neil, but um, it, it's something that just, I, I think I, it slowly evolved for me. And, and uh, I understand it and implement it now pretty aggressively. This is really good, really good. It's like, he frames this, sends you up here. This is nice. This is just all, just textbook. 
good storytelling. This all is taking you up here, which he wants you to see here. Curved shape takes you over to here, and these are all pointing you out of the page. Dun, dun, dun. He's got good size variations. Got this, even though it's it's not technically large on the page, it's a large full shot. He breaks the panel border, which is cool. Or actually, it's not even closed. I, I use that too. It, it can be pretty effective. Um, some small figures here. And uh, then, you know, like a fairly nice size relationship with these. So Ra's al Ghul, based on this, is actually bigger than Batman. So he's a pretty big dude. And you see he, he keeps it consistent here. It's interesting. I didn't know that. How do you spot blacks? Well, sometimes it's just bullshit to get you to go a certain direction. You know? If there was that heavy of a shadow, then, then think about what Batman would have been lit by. It's not even accurate. It doesn't matter. Some of it's finagled. And then the lighting on Batman changes, and all of a sudden it's coming from here. But it doesn't matter, because the thing is, is he's just creating form. This, and then... Beautiful, beautiful sweeps. Mass is nice. I'm actually glad that we're doing this book. So, so I don't mean to be uh, uh, so uh, matter of fact about it, but but uh, Gabe, I mean, it, it's just you gotta know. You gotta know. Man, this is good. Splash page. Ugh, color is bad. It's the computer colors in this don't really mix well. I'm not a huge fan of the, the flesh tone. Because honestly, in in this weather condition, you the colors wouldn't be like this. That's the problem. It's like they have a warm light on them in an ice cold area. Do you see? Do you see? This, atmospherically speaking, that none of this would be this color, but yet this is, this is nice though. I mean, actually, like, there's little spots that I like, but yeah, it's not, it's not what makes sense. This is better. This is way better. This is what that other page should have looked like more. Okay, so let's check out the, the story tone on this. So this is kind of cool. You, you, you kind of want to start here. It's interesting. And he brings you around this way, directs you back up, and then brings you back down. Do you see this? Look at this. He brings you back down. Da na 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 na. Da na 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 na. Da na 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 na. And then, huh? Huh? where are we going? We're going this way. <laughs> and remember what we talked about, like with um, Bill Sienkiewicz actually would send you out the pages the other way. It was funny. It was like. A lot of people will have kind of shapes that kind of push up here. And I can't remember what way Bills went. If he swept you back around? Something like that. But he had, he had a personality or like a little tick in his work where he would do it a different direction. It's kind of cool. Oh, this is a great page too. So when I'm looking at this. I actually go this way first. It, it, uh, it's tricky because when I'm looking through the phone, sometimes I see things differently. But yeah. Based on this, uh, the silhouette kind of blends in more. So I start here and I follow the gun up and go this way. And then I'm following them kind of down. And then I go back up to Batman. But, you know, he's got enough stuff sending you this way that works good. And then I, I drop down with this. I come back up here. And then he continues that pattern here. And uh, the one thing that I was going to start to focus in on a little bit, and, and these might be harder pages to do it, is consistency of characters uh placement in in um shots and also like like if batman is standing in a certain position and he turns like what would his cape do is it consistent with the storytelling um you know because sometimes it it like would look better to have something on this side of a character but you've already established maybe in the panel before that he's standing a certain way where it's going a different direction i mean sometimes you can kind of probably uh, fake believability. So this is interesting here. He's got this great this great hooking shot, which really creates quite a bit of tension, and it pulls you this way. It's a strong. Really has got a snap to it. Um, 
I, I did a review yesterday of a guy's pages and I was pointing out. Remember this? Really, really good placement of the character. Same deal here. Beautiful shapes. Man, this stuff has never looked better to me. Super glad that I picked this book. It's like my brain does it for me. I, uh, you know, I hadn't thought of Neil Adams in months. And just, I woke up around four in the morning and I was like, we need to do Neil Adams. That's how it happens. <laughs> That's how I pick videos for my YouTube channel. I'm on autopilot. I'm telling you, the best way for me to work is to stay out of the way. I, I've said that before, that, that if I start using rational thought and, and direct what I do, I never do as good a work as I do when um, I just let my instincts lead me. So, so this is good, man. Really nice. I'm thinking too. I'm just feeling like a repetitive shape here somewhere. Where is it? I guess it's this. It sort of juxtaposes it up here, but pulls you down here. This is nice. Really good attention to detail. And then this moves you out here. This is interesting. This is like. Uh, the first time that he's actually ended on a middle beat, but what's cool is he he's shoving you out both ways, so it it actually has a nice nice little moment. So again, there's no rules, just uh, options that that will have a level of um, success, you know, based on on what you do. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna kind of take this in really quick first. Oh man, that's nice. The colors, like on this this page in particular, even though it's a little brighter, doesn't they don't bother me as much. It works a little better. I think the problem too is with with DC. They're they they definitely want the characters' costumes to sort of stay the traditional colors no matter what. I've I've heard that. I don't know that for a fact, but like things like Robin's costume, Batman's blue, like you can kind of play with it a little bit but but they they generally tend to want to keep it looking that way in sort of any circumstance and again I'm, i know you could point out a million um contrary uh examples of it but but man that is really good i feel like i've seen that before too probably someone swiped it <laughs> his robin i love his robin's hair is great even from the back that's really really good it's lit lit nicely um but yeah, I mean, you can see the light's coming from here, and it's, it's, he's got just enough lighting here, and then Robin's hair is also being affected by it, but he pulls you all in the shadow and sends you up here. It's a nice big shot. Well, I hope this is fun and interesting, and again, I didn't mean to be a dick, but it's like, like, I, I get asked a lot of the same questions over and over again, and, and, uh, I, I, like, if I tell you something is incredibly important in another video... Listen to what I'm saying. I'm telling you. So there's a reason that I say that it's incredibly important. Okay? I choose my words carefully with that stuff. <laughs> it's like it used to bug me when people would go, Oh, that, that artist is a genius. And I'm like, i will save genius for someone else. But uh, they're really good. <laughs> so. Oh, man. The lighting on the boots is great. And the pants, too. Oh man, that's great. So this is a slightly interesting is <clears throat> it this almost feels like a slightly tighter shot. Like he pulls the camera back a little bit. May may have been unintentional and the color may be sort of um making it feel that way, but so here's the size relationship between these two. That guy is huge. Uh you know, I guess it works. I'm just soaking it in. I'm trying to. Uh, what it is is the ground plane's a little off. Where Batman's feet would fall is is a little. Uh, he's got the, the ground plane is like right about there. Like like your vanishing point would be there. So okay. Ooh, that's nice. Oh wait, hold on. We skipped the page. Man, this book is really good. I'm not a huge fan of how he draws the cape, honestly, but. Uh, a minor nitpick. It's 
Spencer was really good. These colors, although I can tell maybe the cape feels a little different, um, the background color and stuff like that looks a little more old school, which, which actually I think kind of works. This gets a little crazy down here. What in the world? Are those children or like weird looking adults? I can't tell what is going on. He's like an old man child. <laughs> I see those guys in the graveyard. I'm getting out of there. Oh, man. I remember this. I, I uh, here. Oh, man. That next page is great. So this is a really, really cool cover. Batman's in big trouble. I like how he drew the cape there. That looks great. He, he kind of, you know, he does this thing where, where um, depending on the action, he will kind of cartoony it up a little bit. But, but that's really good. That looks super cool. I love the, the chunks of cape right here and all this. That's nice. He's good with the utility belt. He's got it like going in perspective. Just enough lighting on it. Okay, look at this. You don't see shots like this in comics that often anymore. Look at the boat in the background. Man, that is nice. I like the cape here too. That that works for me. That's cool. Man, that is great. What a nice original that would be. Holy cow. It's got a little bit of a curvilinear perspective going here, so it's vanishing points up here. He's just got kind of everything arcing. And then it goes this way and kind of curves works looks good then it comes around like that not that hard to do honestly it's a neat effect this is nice and an interesting uh, little thing he did a uh, sort of one sequence and in a weird way almost one shot but because he breaks up into panels you get it dropping it's further down and there kind of almost like if you connected it all and then removed one of these steps, it's like any of them could be part of the original drawing. Same deal here. He's got curved perspective. Let's go on up this way. It moves good. Boom. Where do you fill in your blacks? Where it frames things. Where do you put shadows on your characters? Where do you pick a light source that's going to help you move stuff through? You know? That's how you do it. That's really nice. Man, he's got a great, great thing going on there. This stuff all curves you back up, but man, that's, that's wild. Man, these are great, great comic books. I have all three of these books, too, and they're big. It's like, this thing is 300 pages. It may not all be Neil. I think it is, though. You may have done a real long run on this book. Well, this is fun to check out. I'm really, really blown away. Like, really blown away. But that's the thing, is if you hear enough that someone is really great, and you don't get their work, like, like for whatever reason, and look, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has different tastes. You have a different level of experience and knowledge. I'm guilty of it, too. Look, look, I've been in the comics for a long, long time, and I'm just uh, still getting my feet wet with Neil Adams. So is is that something I should be ashamed of? Or is it better late than never? You know, maybe I wasn't ready to, to understand this stuff then. So you might be in the same spot. And again, you, you may not really like this right now. 
And then maybe, you know, 10 years from now, you'll come back to this video and be like, man, this stuff is really cool. I had no idea. And then I hear people say that all the time with, with, uh, some of the stuff that I'll, I'll, I'll share. They'll go, oh, you know, I was, a guy was saying the other day, he wasn't really a big fan of Mignola's stuff. And, and cause I, I did a, a Patreon video a week or two ago going over, um, storytelling and, and placing blacks and all the things that Mike does great. Um, and how to, um, be able to draw all this different content. Cause that's the, that's the key too, is how do you know how to draw a sailboat or a harbor or whatever? So we were discussing that and, um, the, my videos have made him a fan of Mignola stuff and, and that's cool, you know, but, but you know, when you're ready, you'll, it, the, that, that door will unlock for you. This is a great page, man. So he's, he, he did almost like a, this is very focused in here, but then he, he breaks it open. So you almost have this like really cool thing here Then he leads you down and then back up. So <coughs> it's like, he's got this circular sort of thing going on. Yeah, so good. It looks like he's having a lot of fun doing this too. That's the impression that I'm getting is is you can see sort of like his um it, it's like an enthusiasm and and uh like he's engaged in this job so you know sometimes you do stuff and you're you're being professional and you're getting through the stories and some pages may be like that but but uh yeah you can tell like like he's he's not not showing off but but the professional doing, doing work and each page seems to inspire him to do creative things. And look, not all pages are created in equal. When you get a script, sometimes there's <coughs> things that feel repetitive or, um, you know, like, oh man, I gotta draw this again. I've already done this like four or five times. Man, that's nice. The boat filling up with water. My cat wants in. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> okay, so we're 27 minutes. Let's do, we'll kind of hustle through one more. It's really, really cool. That reminds me of someone too, it's interesting. Getting a little deja vus. Oh man, these covers are great. You see how the cape kind of changes here and there sometimes? Like, that's my least favorite. I don't like how the shoulders, like how it's so kind of warbly. This looks better. Even McFarlane, I think, was definitely kind of man. He does great dead trees. And again, in black and white, man, that looks great. It's very Kevin Nolan. Kevin Nolan would use that color palette, the, the blues and pinks and grays. Kevin Nolan's another one. He's a really, really good storyteller. It's different. Oh, <laughs> Neil's the, the master of, like, 70s clothes. <laughs> Warriors, come out and play. <laughs> That's nice. Perspective, baby. The symbols. If you can't write super in 3D cube form, how are you going to draw people? I mean, that's the bottom line. So try stuff like that. Like, can you do the Shazam symbol in perspective? Can you do it in three point perspective? Can you know, because if you're struggling with that, then you definitely need to hone in your fundamentals and this other stuff will fall into place easier. Like, again, I've been discussing it on, um, Patreon, uh, how, how, how the growth curve worked for me and how I went from really kind of feeling like I didn't understand much at all to like really actually feeling pretty confident in what I'm doing. And it, it will only get better. I'm I'm a confident beginner, is what I'll say. Is is I can draw consistently where I'm at right now, which is really really good because now I can refine it. But before that, and it happened, I think because I learned how to ink, um, I remember that process and and how things uh, sort of. It's like you have a million things to learn 
then you kind of like can do it and then you get better at it. And I'm at the point where for penciling where I can do it and like you could hire me for a job and, and I know what I can deliver and now it's just make it better, you know. Sorry, we're running out of time. I don't want to have to make a second video on this. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're really, really serious about your art and want to get better, come over to Patreon because uh, that's where it's going down. All right. Talk to you later and have a good one. Bye.